Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the three different Taekwondo styles. The ITF Taekwondo, which I'm practicing, the WT Taekwondo, which is mostly the Olympic Taekwondo, and the ATA Taekwondo. So, let's start. Stemming from Korea, the Taekwondo Association formed in 1959. Taekwondo currently has three major bodies the International Taekwondo Federation, which I am a part of, the WT, which is the World Taekwondo Federation, and the ATA, which is the American Taekwondo Association. There's a note here that the WT Taekwondo was used to known as WTF Taekwondo, but it has been renamed to be only WT Taekwondo to avoid any negative connotations with WTF. The world of Taekwondo possesses a lot of diversity. Though all these forms have evolved from its inception in Korea during the 1940s, there's a vast difference between the styles. Let's break it down and maybe this would be helpful. The differences can be observed with the applied techniques, the tendencies, the approach, the patterns, the rules, so a lot of things. Let's begin with the general differences. International Taekwondo Federation emphasizes on the traditional Taekwondo which was developed by General Choi Hong Hee, while the American Taekwondo Association is a blend of both the WT and the ITF which emphasizes on the overall development of the practitioner. With the WT is renowned for its involvement in the international competition, the Olympics. WT is sportive in nature and compared to the International Taekwondo Federation, while ITF is considered by many as the body which carries the traditional Taekwondo beliefs. WT is a little bit more commercial in that nature. And ATA is an entirely different entity, which is sort of a blend of the ITF and the WT. People who practice WT Taekwondo, they say it's quick and tactical and focuses mostly on the sparring and the sparring matches. Whereas the other two bodies, especially ITF Taekwondo, is more about traditional martial art, which includes all kinds of things not just sparring, it includes the patterns, it includes the board breaking, it includes the traditional sparring, it includes the basic and self-defense as well. So as you've seen, the logos of the WT, the ITF and ATA are all different. The history is also different. The ITF was founded in 1966 by General Choi Hong Ki. ITF is based upon the styles developed by General Choi. Then, the ATA was founded in 1969 by Master Hang Ung Lee. The WT is the youngest one, formed in 1973. It was renamed from World Taekwondo Federation to World Taekwondo. The WT, as we mentioned before, concentrate on the Olympics. ITF, however, is the most practiced style in the world. ATA is mostly practiced in the US, and it's, as we said, a combination of the WT and the ITF. ITF is not affiliated to World Taekwondo. ITF has its schools, requirements, and even different sparring principles, and is strictly a traditional martial art. World Taekwondo or Olympic Taekwondo. The rules of the old school Olympic Taekwondo were different as they imbibed in the traditional spirit before the implementation of electronic hogu. Before the electronic hogu initiation in 2008, the intention by sparring was to knock your opponent out. However, there is a change and addition of a sport flavor of old school transformed into a more tactical taekwondo, emphasizing on just scoring a quick point of your opponent's weaknesses, so a quick kick, a quick punch, and these days it's mostly a lot of kicking. While the world sees Taekwondo as Olympic Taekwondo, people who have been practicing WT Taekwondo for over a decade can tell the difference between Olympic Taekwondo and the old school WT Taekwondo. The old school Taekwondo is usually referred to Taekwondo before the electronic hogu was introduced in 2008. It was a knockout sport and quite vicious version of Taekwondo we see today. The practitioners were required to leave a trembling impact and try to incapacitate their opponents with the help of kicks. Now let's talk about the International Taekwondo Federation sparring, which follows semi-contact sparring. 
Here it's a little bit more defensive and knockout is not the intention. You can see that the International Taekwondo Federation there is no chest protector. A drawback of the semi-contact sparring is that power is undermined. It follows the traditional militaristic approach as said by General Choi. Thus the techniques are locked down and those are limited in numbers. However, with time, considerable changes have been improved in ITF as well, and it's no longer direct. When I see ITF sparring, it's a little bit more versatile than WT because in ITF, we are allowed to use our fists. So we're wearing gloves as well, but we're actually punching with them. So you're allowed to hit the opponent from the hips up, and you're also allowed to kick them from the hips up. Is no kicking on the legs but that's true in most of taekwondo sparring what's also very important is that because there's no chest protector a good sidekick can actually hurt the other person so that's why the semi-contact is more important it's definitely not full contact because you can do considerable amount of damage the american taekwondo association is seemingly a blend of both styles I mentioned above. ATA didn't emphasize on trembling shock to score a point as seen in traditional WT or ITF. Focus blow with proper contact towards a legal target without attempt being blocked was enough. Fast forward four decades, ATA with regards to sparring is much lighter than WT or ITF sparring. Sparring in WT or ITF is considerably heavier than to ATA. We talked about punches. When it comes to throwing punches, WT doesn't allow to punch to the face because uh, that's just not in the rules, though it's a full contact sport. But on the contrary, in ITF, it does allow a punch due to its uh, semi-contact nature. But of course, there's a limitation. The punch should be thrown clean and only with as much power as the referee can see. So you can just like punch the other person you're not allowed to just really hurt the other person because that's not the goal again this is just sparring otherwise you might be penalized by the referee in ata with regards to punches follows the same protocol as itf as far as i'm aware for the gear in wt sparring each competitor is wear the headgear the mouthpiece the forearm pads chest protector and shin guard in itf sparring each competitor wears a headgear, gloves, and feet protectors. You can also wear shin protectors, and for the ladies, you can wear a chest protector, and for the men, you can wear cups. The ATA sparring, each competitor wears a headgear, gloves, mouthpiece, and feet protectors, and probably cup protector for the men. In WT sparring, kicking is allowed to the following areas, chest protector, headgear, and face. Punching is allowed to the chest protector only. If you are a young practitioner below 14, only light kicking to the head is allowed. However, if you have black belt, you can kick to the head with full power. In ITF sparring, you are allowed to punch and kick both body and head. Only light contact is allowed. However, the rulings in ITF are a little complex and might vary based upon the school, studios and the country you live in. In ATA sparring, the primary consideration is given to preventing injuries and thus it promotes light contact with increased emphasis on form. Let's talk about the basics. In ITF, follows patterns while WT has forms. Patterns and the forms are different in both styles. Though it's the same thing, these are different terminologies as per style. The primary object of all these three styles is stem from the Hosin Sul. For example, self-defense, when there are many people coming to you. So there are many variations with regards to everything else. The point of the pattern to do a sparring with imaginary opponents. So you do the moves, you do the whole sequence by imagining that there are people coming towards you and you do the different moves against them to protect yourself and attack back. The major difference between forms and patterns are from the different characteristics of each Taekwondo style. ITF is self-defense oriented, WT is sport oriented, whereas ATA is more self-improvement oriented. Both Pomse, Tool and Hyung refer to the shape 
and form of the pattern. VT is integrated with PUMC, the ITF has the tool, and the American Taekwondo Association has the Hyung. But as I said earlier, all of these refer to the shape and the form. Similar to the names, even the styles are different. Here are some notable differences. In WT, the Pumse are more upright as compared to ITF tools, which puts limitations on the power being distributed or generated. ITF uses the sine wave movement, a rising and sinking form while delivering a strike, kick or block, which requires ITF practitioners to sit deeper. ITF emphasizes on a cycle of breathing while going through motions and emphasis on height and sequestential movement. It's very interesting that none of the Taekwondo federations have grappling. So this is not a grappling martial art. Even if there is a little bit of grappling, that is minimal for some kind of locks and takedowns in self-defense, but not as much as uh, in Jiu-Jitsu or Judo. Some Taekwondo schools do teach you extra grappling techniques, but that's just for practical self-defense and not part of the Taekwondo curriculum. So grappling is not a centerpiece of any of the three Taekwondo associations. There are differences in the ranking systems as well. So, for example, in WT, the belt order is the following. White, yellow, orange, green, purple, blue, brown, high brown, red, and black. In ITF, you don't have a belt when you start. Like, you just wear the white belt, but you have to earn the white belt at your first degree. You have to earn the white belt at your first exam. So then you will have white belt, after that the white belt with yellow stripe, then yellow belt, then yellow belt with green stripe, green belt, green belt with blue stripe, blue belt, then blue belt with a red stripe, then red belt, then a red belt with a black stripe, and finally the black belt. In ATA, they don't start with a belt as well as in ITF, and then you have to earn the white belt, then the orange, yellow, camouflage, green, purple, blue, brown, red, red black, and black. The exams are also different in all Taekwondo styles. There are also major differences in the do box or uniforms in all three styles. Differences in the uniforms are visible and noticeable ones include the length of the shirt, traditional rope style in ATA, the new design approach in WT, and the ITF with the more traditional feeling. Also, there are major visual pattern differences. WT has a thick black border neckline, whereas the ITF has only the torso part with thick black borders. ATA, on the other hand, has multiple black stripes. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for this channel for more videos. Let me know in the comments below which type of Taekwondo are you associated with. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Take one.